This episode is presented by BetterHelp, Quench Hydration, DraftKings, and Flow Hockey. The eShow podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Do you have something new that you would like to learn or a new skill that you're looking to develop? Therapy can help you reconnect with that sense of wonder. Whether or not you've tried it before, it can help everyone despite what you may or may not have going on in your respective life at the moment. If you're thinking of therapy, give BetterHelp a try and rediscover your sense of curiosity. Visit BetterHelp.com THPN for 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash THPN for 10% off your first month. Welcome to The E! Show, presented by the Hockey Podcast Network. Founded in 2013, the EHL is your next step on the path to college. Over the past decade, the EHL has established itself as the college placement leader on the East Coast. And now, here's your host, the commissioner of the Eastern Hockey League, Neil Ravin. Thanks, Jim. And with that, let's bring in Jeff and Jake. And guys, a special guest this week. You see the jersey I have on, right? A very special guest. I do. Go yes. Bobcats. Yes, we went to the same school. He likes to refer to himself as my neighbor half the time. Please welcome to the podcast, the head coach of the New Hampshire Avalanche, Chris Sorella. Hey, Chris. Hey, guys. How's it going? How's it going? Then Good morning. Good morning, Big everybody. C. <laughs> Big C, happy to have you on the debut. And Neil, uh, you forgot to say Quinnipiac's also uh, all-time leading goal scorer, Chris Sorella. I didn't want the, his head to come, you know, become bigger before the podcast even started. But, but you know he's going to yep. throw it in there at some point. So Chris had to do that for you, buddy. Yes, yes. I appreciate it. You always have my back, Jeff. That's why I love you. <laughs> Hi, buddy. I love you too, buddy. Listen, I put the jersey on for him. I never got the chance to wear it myself there, okay? Chris did. I didn't. We'll get that all out there right now. But, hey, Jeff, while we're on, while we're on that, do you yeah. – I don't know if you and Jake know this. The hmm. first time I met Chris – do you know what he called me? Niall? Chris knows. Wait, he's already laughing. <laughs> he said, oh, yeah, you're the, you're the new guy, Neil. You're so high maintenance. <laughs> wow. Yes. And with that, we'll jump into Around the E-Show with Chris Sorrell. Let's take a look at what's going on Around the E-Show. So, of course, we have Chris on, the head coach of the New Hampshire Avalanche, the team that every year, puts you know 20 different players it feels like in the college chris when you bring back the team this season and you have to turn over as much of the roster that you do like you do every single year how, how do you have to prepare differently knowing that you only have so many returners coming back to your season this season yeah i mean uh that's definitely a great question uh it's it's never easy uh whether you're returning 10 guys or two guys um you know we we have our training camp we start early we start early, we build a culture, we teach systems, we learn to play as a team early. You know, we're starting uh, about the third or second or third week in August. Uh, we have a uh, very, uh, very strict off-season regimen for workouts and nutrition, and uh, we get our guys in early and we get them going. Uh, it's the best thing to do is to build a culture and, and get the ready systems-wise and, and learn to play, how to learn each other and learn how to play as a team. And you have two players that are coming back this season that are already committed for next fall. Um, is there any message that those two players, while are already having that weight off their shoulder, that that they can kind of deliver to the rest of their teammates about just the process, getting that whole process done that they can that they can share with their teammates? Yeah, you know what's great about both uh, Jay Kynes and Ryan Dan is you know they believed in the process. Um, Ryan Dan was in our youth program, six, U16. He played U18, played EHL Premier, and played EHL. You know, he just believed in the process. And uh, Jake Hines, no different. Uh, Jake played the Premier Games last year, just last year, before he committed to Western New England. So, you know, it's they didn't jump the steps. They believed in the process, and they stuck to it. They competed very hard on and off the ice. And, you know, it's just proof in the pudding, if you will, in terms of, players trying to rush the process yeah uh, unfortunately nowadays with so many junior teams a lot of colleges not uh you know the transfer portal not a lot of room you got to believe in the process and those two guys did that to a t they did everything they were asked and and it, and it, it, they both got rewarded for it 
So it, it was an amazing journey for both of them, and I don't think either one of them would change a thing. And Chris, actually, speaking of uh, one, Ryan, Dan, how have you been able to recruit uh, family members so well? You know, you had Kyle, Dan, uh, you have Brody Andrioli this year. You had Rory before that. Well, and, the Hines, and the Heinz family there, Jeff, and, too. That's and the Heinz family. family. How yes, there was three Heinz's. So well? um, I'm not really sure. Uh, <laughs> I mean, okay. To be honest with you, I have no idea. But I've had a lot. You know, I've had uh, the Thompsons. Um, uh, I had Sam Thompson and Ben Thompson. I had the Hines. I had three Hineses um, with Jake, Tyler, and Devin. Um, yeah, so now I got the Andrioli brothers. It's I'm not sure. That's a great question, but I'm pretty good at it, I guess. So uh, if anybody has uh, you know a, a brother, just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> that is of age. That is of uh, legal junior hockey age. No, well, no it's perfect. Not really, it has to not be a really younger brother. Really. Remember how that came about, but it did. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes, a younger brother, correct. Uh, of course, you started off this past week, opening day, a win over the Terriers, uh, and then you actually dropped a, a one-goal contest to the Warriors the next day. Nobody enjoys losing. I think that's a pretty accurate statement for the world, right? Uh, but when you suffer yep. a loss early on like that on the road, what can it teach your team? Well, with battling adversity early is great really battling adverse at any point of the season makes you better, makes you better as a team, makes you better as an individual, makes you better as a coach too. Cause you know, you, you, you're, you have to look at new things maybe, you know, and uh, uh, it was a great first win for us. And, uh, you know, even though Valley played a great game defensively, uh, their goaltender was phenomenal and thought we still played a good game systematically. And, uh, you know, we did, we, we hit our keys to the game uh, for the most part. But, uh, you know, it's good to battle that adversity early and getting on the road and Valley is a tough place to play. And, um, you know, so it, it gives the new guys, especially that, you know, that feeling of, you know, we got to we got to be at our best every day. And I think that's one thing that some of our new guys learned. Um, you can't take shifts off in this league if you want to win games and if you want to get to the college level. So um, I think it was a good learning lesson for us. No shifts off. You know, and uh, we've had a great week of practice here before we head to the game Friday. And you brought up uh, making it to the college level. So that kind of perfectly sets us up. So, you know, you're going to be a part of the the college series this year. I think it's one of the most exciting times of the year. What are the more gratifying parts of that experience, in your opinion? I mean, I think the best thing, first of all, hats off to you guys, because, you know, without you guys, that doesn't it doesn't run right. I mean, it, there's a lot more to it than probably players and the families and, and future families even realize there's planning, there's, you know, the, the campus tours, there's setting up the meals, there's, you know, the travel part or picking the players, you know, that all. And, and then there's the videography part and all that stuff that people don't realize how much work goes into it. So hats off to you guys. Um, Cause you're behind the scenes. Don't get enough credit for what you, you all do. Um, but as, in terms of the players and, and what they get out of it is just playing on a ca- college campus, playing against a college hockey team at, at that age before they're even there is just such an amazing tool for them. Um, you know, they, they get to see what it's like to be in that day to day. You know, they we get to practice on their ice. You know, their their coaching staffs come and talk to our players. All that stuff is so educational whether it's on ice or off ice for the players that are able to attend, but even for the players that don't attend, they can kind of get a step-by-step in terms of, you know, uh, us as a staff, getting it out there, letting, letting everyone know this is what our players go through. This is what the next level is all about. And uh, I think it's just a great educational tool, uh, both uh, athletically, academically, and, you know, just the whole overall experience. And you'll be part of the coaching staff with the main all-star team this year, which we dub as the best of the best all-stars going up against Brockport and Elmira with Nick Coda, Bill Zanaboni, and Adam Hooley. First, uh, how many laughs are we going to have with this coaching staff? (laughs) Uh, I'm I'm, I'm sure I'm going to have a stomach ache on my way home there. Uh, It's going to be definitely a good crew. Uh, You know, just not only great men, but uh, great coaches and, I think everyone's going to learn a little bit from 
from each other uh, as, you know, coaches talk shop. And, you know, we, we you know, just uh, the other day, uh, Coach Hooley and I were talking about different systems and systems that we're using this year. And, you know, he, he kind of picked up on one of the ideas that I liked and he ran with it. And he's now implementing it with his team and, you know, just different things. And we're getting drills off each other. And then, of course, there's the, uh, the comedy that goes along with it. So I'm expecting some uh, great hockey uh, and a great time and a great atmosphere uh, as those guys are all uh, all great coaches. Boys, I think we should put Chris on the spot. Who are you uh, most excited to coach with out of those boys? There, oh, Chris? that's a good point. Yeah. Wow, that's I mean, that, that's a good that, that that's a that's definitely a tough one. Uh, you know, I, I, I yeah, I think. Uh, Cooley, I mean, it, it, is it gonna be? Is it? Yeah, it's tough. Is it gonna be the laugh part? Because I don't know. It's 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 a it's a close race. Um, I mean, re- realistic. I, obviously, uh, you guys know I'm very close with uh, Coach Cooley, and but uh, myself and Coach uh, Coach Z are very close, and, and Nick and I, uh, Nick Coder and I, have developed a relationship over the last couple of years. He's been in the league, so. But uh, I think all of them. But uh, I, I mean, I gotta. I gotta say, uh, Adam Cooley probably is the number Ooh. one, and then it's then it's uh, then it's a pretty close race after that. Uh, okay. But right. uh, I mean, real, real, yeah, really, they're just all awesome. So I, so I think it's just going to be a phenomenal experience. Yeah, since for for every team we dress five lines of forwards, four pairs of D, and three goalies, so twenty six total. Obviously, we put one goalie in the net. We tell the two other goalies to probably sit in the penalty box. But Coach Hooley, speaking of him, did say to me, he goes. The bench is already pretty tight, and he goes, "I'm probably the smallest coach of the four, so I don't really know where I'm going to stand <laughs> yet." So I said, "Yeah, we'll we'll figure that out when we get up there." But um, that's for the main All Star team, which of course uh, Coach Terrell has been a part of in the past. But uh, this past season was the first time we had the two regional teams. Obviously, the year before we kind of experimented with just the South Division. It blew up into we had six college games last year six this year and i already have six teams ready to go for next year but of course coach rilla coached the northeast all-star team last year that actually beat the team whose hat i'm wearing right now southern new hampshire when Uh, you were coaching that northeast all-star team uh coach rilla obviously it's only coming from players from that north and east divisions but did you make sure that those players realize that yeah maybe it's not the best of the best but these kids are are true all-stars all the way through as well last year Oh, of course. I mean, that's the beauty of this event is that you you have 75 plus players that are getting this experience. I don't think, you know, when I look at this and I and I know as a league, we, we you know, we have that main event. But I, I, I look at this as all three of these teams are legitimate NCAA prospects, you know, as well as others in our league, obviously. But these ones that happen to be selected, not everybody can make it, unfortunately. Uh, and some good players do get left out, no question. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's the great thing about the event. There's 75-plus players in our league that are being represented and, and going out there and playing NCAA uh, competition. So it, it's it's definitely a, a positive for, for everyone that's in the event. And I know a lot of colleges actually watch those games online as well. Um, cause recruiting never stops at that level. It's the bloodline of every team. So it never stops. So they use that as a tool as well to recruit the players. Cause now they're seeing them in, again, in NCAA competition, as opposed to just in our league competition. So it, I think it's great for everyone involved in terms of the college aspect and the EHL aspect. Yeah. And, and Chris, actually, do you use the, uh, interesting kind of question for you. Do you use these events too, to kind of do some scouting on guys? I mean, obviously it's mid season. Do you do this? Do you use any like kind of, uh, style to like scout these guys for when you may play them later on in the EHL season? Cause you're getting to see a lot of these really good talented players on these teams that, you know, you're going to see in crucial moments. Of the year. Yeah. I mean, I mean, watch watching the Groth kid, you know, uh, play in that in those games last year you know uh i was coaching him i got to learn what first of all no not only a great athlete but what a great human being he he is and and so yeah you do you do you, you kind of take an eye and say hmm you know kind of almost some of us are like i wish i had that kid on my team you know in, in a way but uh <laughs> but Tampering. but yeah but yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, but yeah, we do. I mean, we do. But I think the coaches also just enjoy the experience too. To be honest with you, it's 
yep. it's awesome for us too. Yep. You know, we're we're getting to see other players in the league where instead of being in a competitive nature in a game, we're coaching them up now. You know, so I I, I think it's a both a two way street there. Uh, so it's a great question, Jeff. I think it's a two way street. Uh, yes, we do watch the kids and say uh, we got to watch him. He's pretty deadly on the power play, or or he's got more skill than I thought. You know, and, and, and so I think we do use it as that that, but we also use it as a as a tool to kind of help guide them as you know their coaches for that particular week weekend or a couple of days uh, where we can help make them better too, as outside coaches. So I think it's a, uh, it, it, it's an awesome situation for, for us coaches to be involved too. Yeah. And, and of course the coaching staff for that Northeast team this year, uh, going to feature Cody Ganyu from the Boston junior terriers, Seth Gustin from the Vermont lumberjacks, and Corey Felitti from the East Coast Wizards. Um, you, you'll be with the main team. You had that Northeast team last year, uh, but for the players that are going to be with that uh, three-person coaching staff, how valuable will their time be? Yeah, that's another – that's one thing about this league is, uh, you know, week in, week out, there, there's a lot of great coaches in this league, just like there's a lot of great players. And and so I think that Cody and and, and staff and, 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 you know, and Seth as a – Seth is a great young coach and, you know, as a staff there, they're going to do, they're in good hands. I guess I'll pass the torch to those guys. I'm expecting (laughs) big things. Yes. Expecting big things. They better pull out at least one win, you know? Uh, But yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the amazing part is yeah, that they're, they're going to enjoy that experience as well. The players and, and those three coaches will do an amazing job. Any uh any fear of missing out for not getting a chance to be uh back at Wentworth? Oh wow, that's Ooh. a yeah. The Wentworth was my first coaching job. Yeah, I mean, I that was uh, geez, I'm in year twenty, I believe, this year. So yeah, I, I, that that would have been nice to 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 face <laughs> off against Wentworth there and and Coach Pacora, who I've known for twenty plus years as well. Uh, so that would have been nice uh, for sure. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll take the pass this year. I'll go up to, uh, that long drive to Brockport and Elmira. Thanks, Neil. And, uh, we're probably going to carpool. Let's be uh, sure. (laughs) Yeah, we'll just rent a, we'll rent a small mini bus. Um, and and, yeah, so I, I mean, uh, I, am looking forward to going up there too. Uh, I haven't been up to the Brockport area, uh, since I was coaching at Wentworth at the college level and, and, uh, you know, Aaron Saul does an amazing job there in Elmira. So that's going to be kind of an awesome two games as well. So, but yeah, but the Wentworth thing, it was, it, it would have been nice for sure as, uh, you know, just to kind of play against my old, uh, my old team there. But, um, but I, you know, I wish them luck, but not too much. Yes. But we'll wrap this up with the mid Atlantic team, of course, now, which will be coached by, uh, Greg Heffernan, James Mello, Adam Bartholomew and Eric Projan. They're going up against Johnson and Wales and post university. One thing that we've kind of joked about in this podcast so far, um, the players getting the chance to go to Johnson and Wales, they're going to get some pretty good food during that tour. Oh, very cool. So is that, is that yeah, a pit stop for the Sorella uh, minibus on the way up to New York? Yeah, we city? might, we may have to, we have to make a big call. call so big city. <laughs> That's absolutely. Absolutely. We might have to call coach Graham. Co- Co- That's right. Jake and I both. <laughs> we uh we share pictures there but yeah we sure we, we share some pictures of our food and give each other ideas all the time it's kind of awesome so so uh Two you know italians I, right there that's right long island italians even better oh, yes, that's you know right. what i mean that's, the kind. <laughs> that's, right. that's right at the best kind correct the best Still kind Hofstra, baby. uh yeah that might be better <laughs> yes that, that's right that's right jeff Hofstra. Not too far from my old stomping grounds. That's right. Um, but yeah, that yeah, definitely uh Coach Graham will have to give him a call, put put some plates on the side for us, you know. <laughs> uh so that's obviously the college series. We're talking about it already. I know it's still September, but guys, it's it's only a few weeks away, and and we're gearing up for it, of course, right after the showcase. Uh we'll be working to select those teams. Back to your team, though, uh Coach Sorella. Obviously, all your players want to be a part of that, and they now have, you know. This Friday's game and the showcase as their kind of final audition uh, for their chance to have their name selected for that. Are any of them asking you extra questions on the side about how they get you know more recognition or or, or how's that how are those conversations going? 
It's been really quiet in my my room, especially. It's been very quiet. It's been very quiet. Yeah, they all they all know though. They believe. Oh, you're coaching the that all star game, right? Co- the you know the one going to Brockport, and so I get I do get those little bit of little bit of questions, but nothing nothing more than that. It's been really quiet. My it's kind of scary actually. So we'll, <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll wait and see, you know, obviously we, we got some good players. There's good players all around the league. So it'll be, uh, it's going to be tough. It'll be tough to, to select those players. But uh, like I said, cause some good players will get left out, unfortunately, but, but um, you know, I think there's a, pro- the, the coaching staff will have a process and, and we'll go through that process. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you coming on. We know that you're busy preparing for tomorrow night's game down on the Cape. Um, and, and, as you said in your email, going back and forth with Coach Santaboni, we hope that you have a smashing good time tomorrow night. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, I definitely plan on having a smashing good time with Coach Z. Always fun to visit the Cape, no question. One of the top email exchanges of all time, just putting up. I had to share it with the guys. I had to share it. <laughs> that was Thank, amazing. Thanks, Coach. Good luck tomorrow night. We'll see you at the showcase next week. All right, guys. Thank you, as always. Enjoy the day, and we'll talk soon. See you, Chris. Bye, Chris. See you, boys. Thanks again to Coach Sorella for jumping on. Got the chance to announce the coaching staffs. Guys, I don't know which staff I'd want to play for the most because every staff is going to have a great time during the college series. Yeah. Let's be honest. Yes. yes. <laughs> but like when Huli said to me, he goes, I don't. I really don't know like where to stand. He goes, do I like shift more towards like the end? He goes, if I get like go in the middle, I may get swallowed up. Like, you never know. <laughs> there's, there's some big buildings fools with, you know. <laughs> He's like, listen, if we end up like in a fight, like I'm good. Like we got all the big guys around me. I was like, we're not gonna end up in a fight. Right. Uh, but obviously, you know, it's crazy that they even talk about the college series guys at this point because we just started this uh the season. But you know I'm how fast the showcase, yeah. well, you know how fast it comes up because once the showcase yeah, ends, it's really time to select the teams. And, yeah. and as Coach Sorella said, over 75 players get the chance to be a part of it every year. Um, and I know I, I love finals week and we're a long way from that, but Jake loves college week. I've had players talking to me about the college series already. Yes. Players that want to be there for that week because of just how incredible it is. And yeah, they're they're uh yeah, I, I think it is my favorite week of the year for sure. Yes. Yeah, this is gonna be your third college week, Jake. It's my third year in the league, yeah. 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 Time, talk about time, time flies. flies. Yeah. Three years yeah. with Jakey. Love it. Yes. Yeah. And speaking of uh, time flies, Jeff, first weekend flown by already, right? I mean, it Zoom. felt great just to drop the puck again, like the like the way of the off season. Like we finally get back into action. Like mm-hmm. it, it's funny to think about. Like the off season doesn't really feel like a five, four and a half, five month period until you get to the end of it. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, by the time you get to the end of it, you're like, wait a second. It's almost been, like, half a year to, like, we get back to action. But we jumped right back into it with the EHL this past weekend. And can we just get it right out there? The parody is already back. Like, right off the bat, we already have it once again. Yeah, we were texting about that yesterday with, uh, you know, Valley coming off and beating the Terriers and the Avs. They lose to the Wolves. I mean, Providence, you know, takes a good beating from hockey club rhode island they win yesterday against the seahawks yeah. so i mean it's already on uh full display i like to see the you know the one and ones and the two and ones nice and early yeah yeah jake actually that's a really good point i mean guys like the warriors lumberjacks lumberjacks um you know we're part of that outside looking in we did that new format with the playoffs last year lumberjacks didn't make it warriors edged them out by one point um so i think that's two teams that are very hungry to right the ship per se and yeah, yes. Wickens and Lumberjacks three and zero to start. Valley hey, EHLP goalie of the year, Chris Jengra getting his yeah. first EHL win. Congratulations Ooh. to Chris. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's gonna be a heck of a tandem up there, Wickens and Jengra. That's a nice. That's nice gonna be a great trivia question one day, Jake. Who is oh, the yeah. only EHL team to ever have a duo that both won EHLP goalie of the year? Ooh, like that crazy. is that's a great trivia question. And both for the same team. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah, two years oh apart. My, we'll Jeff, my, head, my head is my head is exploding <laughs> from the inside right now. Uh, but but you bring up the Vermont point and like how they 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 finished one point out. Maybe the message in in Seth Gustin's locker room this year was like, listen, we're coming out of the gates hot. We need every point we can from the beginning. And he takes six points in the opening weekend. 
right? What we what we didn't ask Coach Sorella, and we could have if we really wanted to put him on the spot. They are they are the fourth place New Hampshire Avalanche right now. Let's just get that out there. I know it's early, okay, but they are technically the fourth place New Hampshire Avalanche right now. But. I think we did this song and dance last year. Didn't we have a slow start to no Joe, no, I'm being serious. I think it was what, like 10, 12 games last year. We were like, I don't know, Chris. We yeah. sat on the alarms and then all of a sudden it was like both my prior years. years in this league, the bulk of their wins have come in like the first 10 games of the season. And then they just lose like a single digit amount of games in like 30 <laughs> games. Yeah. So I'm I'm fully prepared for the same thing. <laughs> Uh, as we said last March, inevitable. Anyways, we'll get to the yeah. East Division now. I kind of had to pinch myself a little bit yesterday, Jake, because I, I knew what, that what was getting started yesterday. But I, I once I saw it, the pictures that you took, like the Boston Junior Eagles are now officially a part of this league. They win their first game. What was it like, the atmosphere like for that team yesterday? Their bench was so loud. They didn't sit down once. They bash the boards relentlessly after every uh, goal. Neil loves that. They smash, bash smash, the boards smash, relentlessly smash. after they let up a goal. It was <laughs> it was incredible. They were so loud. It was to the point where I was like, all right, it's this is a bit much. But no, they were they were they were, they were awesome. Uh Ian Moran, he's just a beauty. I love his whole vibe. I mean, you know, I asked him like you know, uh, I'm sure the players are probably nervous. How are you doing? He's just like, I'm fine. Like, this is not a big deal. Like, <laughs> like we're like we're gonna figure it all out out there. And they did. They played a really strong game. I was really impressed with their decor. Um, they were a little you know shell shocked in the first ten minutes. Um, goaltender played great. Uh, Caden Pasqualone. I hope I'm saying that right. Yep. Um, he was excellent in the first ten minutes. They killed off like two or three penalties in the first period, and they never looked back. They yeah. they were great riley van son had three points the defenseman max o'connor looked awesome uh, brady clark looked great so um you know i think as they fill out a little bit more and figure out their identity they're going to be a team to watch for sure down the stretch yeah jake actually that interview with the uh with coach moran was great did he uh were you on your on your toes for that uh when you asked him about picking out a player and then he just gave you the he didn't give you the coach talk he didn't give you one he said nah no nah. and, and they played as a, a a pretty well-oiled machine outside those first 10 minutes i mean they were on the same page and they looked like they really wanted to be around each other and when they were getting off the ice i was in like that little tunnel area and like seeing them and the energy was incredible for a team you know not only uh a team playing their first game together but their first game as a organization in this league so yeah uh yeah it was it was really honestly it was really cool to be a part of and i was impressed with the bandits too i mean if not some not some early heroics from you know the eagles goaltending that that could have been a very different game off the jump yeah and we're gonna have to figure out some sort of like commission uh for coach moran because i can always tell when his twitter gets tagged or he retweets because all of a sudden i'll go back we have a bunch of notifications and i'm like how did that just happen out of nowhere in the past hour? But he's got a pretty big following. So we'll have to figure that out, though, later on. I bring up how I had to pinch myself, though, because, of course, mm-hmm. you guys know uh, I'm from Maine. Grew up a Maine Black Bears fan. That's how it works when you grow up in Maine, right? So mm-hmm. for years and years and years, BC kind of haunted Maine. And I know there's no affiliation, Boston College and the Junior Eagles, but just seeing the logo was kind of like, damn, like. Same colors. Yeah, like they're in the league mm-hmm. now. Like now it's mm-hmm. now it's real, of course. Um, Especially because we talked about it. I mean, this was talked about two years ago. Like, yeah. So they first, came in you know, in the same them. class as as Providence, the Bandits, the Terriers, right. but they were the one that said we want to take so one more year to prepare ourselves for it. <laughs> right. They, they go out and they win their first game. Works out pretty well. Uh, yeah. Of course, the Crazy's Wizards won their first game as well. Crazy. The Express haven't played yet. We'll talk about that next week once their first game passes. Uh, but to the Central we go. And Jake, you kind of just brought this up before. Um, the two and one, one and one records. Look at the central division standings. Everyone's had that 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 good feeling after a game so far, and everyone's had that bad feeling so far. Um, who jumps out at you from the central division early on? I know, I know it's really it's, it feels dead even, but is there one name, one team, one player that jumps out at you from that central division so far? No, no, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going, died there. He has now moved on to the East Division. He's like, bye, Central. I got, I got a little, um, you know, Central Division. Like three out of the four teams I'm seeing tomorrow are going to be a part of the Central Division. Okay. So I'm probably uh, better equipped to answer that question tomorrow. But 
Um, I think, you know, Neil, you know, um, you know, I've been kind of high on Hockey Club Rhode Island uh, yeah. since since the offseason. I think they really have some players this year. And I think I I, talk, I texted you about this for sure, Neil, that every single metric from year one to year two, they improved on. Yeah. Like goals for, goals against, power play percentage, everything. Their points, their wins, everything. Everything improved. So that upward trajectory, I think we'd love to see from a new organization, an organization that really tapped into a different scene of recruits than we had in this league beforehand. So as far as a team that, you know, has done everything right, despite some controversy around their jersey color choices, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they have uh, done everything right on the ice. They have and new whites the this year. Yeah, oh, new whites. The same I personally same. love them. I personally love them. But yeah. no, I hear I hear everything. <laughs> I, the, I, I'm a big fan of the white jersey, right? I... The sock, I still have to get used to. It's got that kind of like funky shape to it with with the color. You'll see it next weekend, Jeff. Like hey, maybe maybe I'm just such like a plain Jane in a way where I would just wear like a white sock personally with nothing else on it. But you'll see it next weekend. Like it's it's I'll a different you. design. Like maybe maybe it grows on me. But the jersey, I do like the jersey a lot for sure. Um, but we'll wrap it up. Yeah, now I like the this. boat. <laughs> the <laughs> we'll boat. Up. That's a nice touch. The same yes. boat or no? The same boat. <laughs> yep. Okay. We'll wrap it up now with the South Division. Speaking of jerseys, the Huntsman are 2-0. I have a Huntsman jersey downstairs, which will break out soon. But uh, it's not the highlighter green that they've won both uh, games with so far. <clears throat> Thoughts on the jersey first? Have you guys seen them? Yeah, actually, uh, I think it was Justin texted me a picture of it the other day. A little Dallas Stars-ish, right? Well, like the Dallas well, Stars have well, that like alternate one. Yeah, I, I mean, like it. listen, if we ever lost power – during a game, like they would still be visible. Like it's, it'd be very, you just visible. better make sure your picks a lot is, uh, you know, up to speed and make sure everything's firing because yeah, those are so bright that you need to make sure everything's calibrated correctly, but I like them. Yeah. So they're off to a two and I'll start the bears similar to last year out in first place so far, uh, two wins and a shootout loss. Philly hockey club split their opening games. Anything from the South jump out to you guys or just the South as the South once again. Uh, yeah, with, with, with those with, with the eighty seventh and Little Flyers only playing one game, it's hard to see that so yeah, far. Because I think true. with the South, like they just trade off wins all year. I think the <laughs> yes. South is like it's such a beautiful thing to see because like you can never anticipate a single thing from the South. Uh, I mean, we already had a sick comeback in game one, a um, couple one-sided games, a couple tight games. So that's the beauty of the South. So I think a little too early to tell, but I mean, uh, uh, that Bears team, they look good. Jason Kilcoin likes to call him Chilcoin because he's got a great vibe. <laughs> I'm always excited to see his squad. And I might be seeing his squad in person. Little uh, yes. little tidbit down, yes. down South maybe in a little bit. Uh, I would say that the score, uh, the scores of those games, 7-1, 5-1, Maybe a little surprising um, yeah. for the Flyers and 87s to be on the end. Usually, you know, two strong defensive teams have good goaltending in years past. I know New Jersey struggled to score last year. Um, hopefully, I'm sure Coach Hooley has fixed that in the offseason recruiting. But, yeah, I think the, to answer your question, Neil, just kind of a little surprised by the the routes uh, and those scores for those yeah. two teams. But early, just like the Avalanche, yeah. it is early. And, Jake, you bring up the stuff. Bears. I know, Jeff, you'll love this. I had a text exchange. I was actually – I introduced Jake to Jill Fisher, our Trinity intern, um, because mm -hmm. she has a story coming out on Monday. Our, th we already did the East Division spotlight. That was one of the three goalies. On right. Monday, it's a South Division spotlight on the two uh, Kondrashoff brothers for the for the Bears, right? Oh, awesome. So we were trying to figure out if they were on the same line, and Jake kept referring to uh, he was going to text Chiller. And I was like, Jill, uh, Chiller is, is Jason Kilcoin. <laughs> he likes to call him Jason Chilcoin. Um but it's, it's, he's been great about it because he was like, listen, they're both from Ukraine. Can you just have her email the questions and we'll sit down and we'll work on the quotes together? And yeah. I was like, okay, no problem. So um, She's like, wait, is Jake talking to the chiller in the rink? Like, is he talking about the machine or what? I don't get it. So, Are we going to have Jill at the uh, showcase, by the yes, way? Yes, yes, she will oh, be there. Great. Can't she will be there. Me. Yeah, she gets to jump. You know, both feet in for the first showcase where we have over 70 something games. Yeah, welcome, Jill. Welcome. It's going to be a lot of welcome hello, my name is hello, my name is hello, my <laughs> yes. name is uh, to the EHLP. Um, not as busy there, guys. Obviously, a little bit a slower start in terms of game count really picks up once we get to the showcase. 
Um, funny enough, though, speaking of, of new employees, Eric Doyle, our new director of hockey operations, the first P box score he sees come up is the eight to five Adirondack and Avalanche game. He goes, is that common? I go, yeah. I mean, look at in the EHLP, we sometimes have games that become a little bit more run and gun like that. Do you guys agree? Yeah, no, no, I definitely <laughs> agree. How about the, uh, but then the first game, Jake shots called, on that five go in. Yeah, the first game Jake called though. I as I say that I'm a hypocrite. Two nothing, Jake. Two, thoughts on your yeah, first right. EHLP call of the year? Yeah, it was uh, it was a really good game. I mean, the Bandits have taken a ton of steps forward, uh, which is a good thing. The Express are going to be an interesting team. I think they're going to have a little bit more of a defensive identity than they had last year. Um, I don't think they'll be able to quite replicate that uh that top line that they had yeah. last year i mean they got a commitment off you know the best player in the p last year which is just oh, insane, DiMartino. charlie di martino yeah. um and the express have moved a ton of guys up so there's really just a handful of returners and a lot of guys that split time but as far as the bandits go uh young team predominantly an 07 team um and they were all pretty solid i mean uh ben ashton and net for the express was the difference maker for that game that could have easily been a tied game i thought you know heading into overtime in the in the final minutes but ben ashton was great and jameson keith was excellent for the bandits in that it was a uh, it was a game where both teams traded a ton of looks and um I think it's a it's a good sign uh, for the EHLP and especially the Bandits who had a tough you know first year come back into the league. They look like they're going to be you know a team that definitely not only hangs around but could get you know a good amount of wins this year. And you've put Will Link the fifth on the map with your goal call. <laughs> oh, Will Link, yeah, Will Link has been texting me a lot since that game. I was going to say, did he come up to you? Or he, he said he texted you or talked to you. It was like great goal call, Jake. And what yeah. did you say? He said, I, he, he said, I know. He said, I, know. I, said, I, know. <laughs> I love that. I love the confidence. Hey, hey maybe, it. maybe a fantasy possibility there. So let's, let's start mm. talking about Yeah. This. Yeah. That top pair for the express is good for sure. Now it's time for the e-show fantasy challenge. Follow along on the EHL app available now for free on both Apple iOS and Android. So as we start off every fantasy challenge, we're like talking about our personal fantasy first. Uh, which, of course, we had our uh, Yahoo Fantasy Draft last week. Um, yeah. Seven of the 12 of us have a connection to the EHL. That is that correct? That number? Yeah, so it's it's me, Jeff, yep. and then the Basile brothers. Uh, Trevor, Jamie, uh, Coach Sorella's in that. So, yes. Uh, Jake, when did you and Mikey decide that you were going <laughs> to wear suits during the, the draft? Suits and fancy pants. <laughs> um love those pants uh i want to say what day was it was it sunday that was sunday yes sunday that was night, sunday. Yeah. Sunday yeah, night, i got cool. home uh from connecticut me and tv were in connecticut i got home and i just said to mikey he was sitting on the couch i was like we're wearing suits for the fantasy draft and he was like <laughs> okay and that was no, that. No, then, no, no argument. We're doing it. No, Mikey understood the assignment. Mikey's an intelligent guy. We knew what we had to do. And listen, we're not friends when it comes to fantasy. And we were all business. Um, you know, we had our meetings. We were on on the phone with our scouts uh, all throughout the the draft. The Central scouting, um, I remember. We have feelers everywhere. Uh, we're very confident in our organization. I'm not going to say the name of our organization here on the podcast. No, but no. we're very confident. Um, it is very funny. No, yes. I guess not. A- yeah, uh, we unfortunately did not get uh, any members of the tribe on the team. That was a uh, a goal that our organization set out for. But um, yeah. you know, the trade yeah. windows. Tribe the Islanders? <laughs> no, oh. no, I mean Jewish players. <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I I knew what he was saying. Yeah, you know, Jake and I are both Jewish. Also, we're tribesmen. Yeah. Well, what's funny is actually Jake is on the right side of my screen right now, and 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 Jeff and Justin on my, on the left side. So. The tribe, like J- J- the tribe is on the right side right now. So, <laughs> love you both, love everyone. I, I do have to bring up though, because we talk about fantasy football and stuff in here too. As you guys know, I'm in the Avalanche fantasy football league where it's oh yeah, how's you know, that going? Uh, or seven Avalanche coaches and me, dude. You know, you know what grinds my gears, Uh-oh. Jeff? Oh, here we go. Awful, Let's go. Awful trade offers. Awful. <laughs> yes. Okay. Last night, Dylan. He's probably get, he's probably Gibson getting... for uh, Pat Mahomes. Or well, well, hold, hold on, ready? So first oh, of all, no. I wouldn't draft Pat Mahomes, Jeff. Who do you think I am? <laughs> anyway, it's like, anyways, uh, Dylan's That's one of the assistant point. coaches, right? He offered me DeAndre Hopkins for CD Lamb. 
Oh my God! I mean, I know I Hopkins know. had a big game last week, but he's on the way down. I, 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 he goes, but it's Hopkins. Like, he, look at the career he's had. I go, career yeah. doesn't matter. No. I go, look who's You'll throwing him. He did ten years I go, ago. look who's yeah. throwing him the ball. Yeah. Makes makes sense. Makes sense. So, um, yeah. So I had to bring up that trade because I I it can't do less. Yeah, you have a good amount of like personal animus getting in the way of you know getting certain players. Maybe that's why I don't win, Jake. Maybe maybe that's why I, I mean fantasy. like bad trade last year. You you said you were flat out not taking Kachuk, and me and Mikey were like, okay, we have the pick after Neil. Like yeah. like I, we are I, getting Kachuk. I still feel good about my team. <laughs> Eddie, Maddie T or Brady T? Listen, I love Brady. I love Brady Maddie the other and week. And we on. But I I did say during the draft, do I pick with my head or my heart after Kachuk? Because I was like, I'm not gonna pick Kachuk. Yeah. I picked Sam Reinhardt, and that was like against what my heart was saying to do. But my head was like, he's good. So I still always I still do not draft Montreal Canadiens, even though that rivalry isn't what it once was. I'm always like, eh. unless it's Caden Primo they, or they, uh, Hotsky, maybe James Drubel. Yeah, they. Jordan they, Harris is gone. He got traded with Patrick Laine. So there's only like seven exceptions there for for Jeff. So, but anyways, but, <laughs> if any maybe of this, not, maybe if, this guy, maybe that. if any of this fantasy doesn't work out, you can always pivot, as we always say, to DraftKings. Yes, you can. Yes, you can, Neil. Uh, and TD Tutty taking it to the house. Whatever you call a touchdown, they matter more at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Ready to place your first NFL bet? Then try betting on something simple like a player to score a touchdown. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the number one place to bet touchdowns. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code THPN. That's code THPN for new customers to get $250 of bonus bets when you bet just 5 bucks and you get one month of NFL Plus Premium. Only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Uh, do you have a gambling problem? If so, you can call 1-800-GAMBLER in New York. Call 877-8-H-O-P-E-N-Y. Or you can text H-O-P-E-N-Y. That would be 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Budo Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. You can avoid that in Ontario. Bonus bets do expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash ftball. NFL Plus Premium. Offer available only to new and former NFL Plus subscribers. Additional NFL Plus Premium terms at nfl.com slash terms. Now let's talk EHL fantasy because Jake is already uh he's already mad at me, guys. That we haven't started this yet because yeah. we, we know who his first pick was going to be, or is going to be, I should say. Yeah, he'll and, be there. Yeah, yeah for sure. Andrew Duvall is already off to a hot start mm. and none of it counts for, for fantasy. Yeah. He texted me about that yesterday. <laughs> I'll try to Did find he really? it. <laughs> oh yeah, he knows he, he tunes in. He tunes in. Doobie Doobie is a huge league guy. He said starting fantasy off rip would have been sweet for you. Just got to do it. You just got to keep doing it now. Yes. So he knows. He knows what you've done to me, Neil. <laughs> this is how, like, everyone always thinks I, like, cheat somehow. I just, we haven't started <laughs> yet. Like, No, I don't think you cheat. Personally, I think I you do I don't screw. Think so you don't cheat. You screw. Oh, wow. And I'm getting screwed. Listen, <laughs> I, there are too many players that we just don't know right now. That's the issue. So like, That's a skill problem for you guys. I'm out there putting out my feelers. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I I would be in first you place right now, but this back. is how it's done. Okay, well, <laughs> if I knew that Owen House would have nine points in three games, I would have been in first place above you. Right. So. No relation to Declan. You didn't. That's not you a, didn't. Uh, um, no, I don't think there's any relation there. But he's got nine points in three games. Uh, Brayson Bennett was a player that is returning, a player that we can keep an eye on. Obviously, was the North Division star of the week. Uh, six points in three games, just like Jackson Duquette also had six points in three games. Any really? other opening weekend performances jump out to you guys? There's a there's a lot of consistency on the uh top scorers chart right now look at look how many players have two goals to assists that fits my wow. that fits my One, like ocd two, three, very well uh, six guys with two and two yeah nice two and four i mean we talked about the bankovitz brothers when we profiled the bears last week chris bankovitz he's off to a heck of a start goal and five assists six points in three games so that's a good one to remember but micaiah bascom he was with Providence last year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now he's with Connecticut. He's got three goals and assists. So that's another name to watch yep. out for. Uh, John Manzi, an EHL vet. He's already got four points. He's playing for the Huntsman now. Um, do we mention Jake Hines, Captain Hines? Yeah. He's got four points in two games. Well, what we should okay. mention is Jake Hines was on the first 
podcast graphic, right? Oh yeah, he That's scored right. Duval in the second podcast graphic. Ooh, this is like the this is like the opposite of the Madden cover. Yes, so we gotta figure we out who, who we want to put on this one because I wonder a... who's been picking those covers. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Hey, but Jake, you uh, brought this up earlier. Up. We we we're, we just talked about some of the scorers that are off to great starts, and we talked about the duo of goaltenders um, up in Vermont. How about the duo in Valley? Both played EHLP this past season, uh, in Jake Davies and Ben O'Keefe, and one of them has a win over the Avalanche. One of them has a win over the Terriers. Thoughts on that pairing so far this season? Yeah, I think um, I think Valley obviously had a, an interesting situation last year, being a little bit light. You know, Ryan McGrath at the very first showcase said to me, you know, quality over quantity is kind of our mindset this year. Um, yep. You know, the EHL team had a great run at the end of the season. Um, had to put themselves in a position to make the playoffs. EHLP team was excellent all throughout the season, and a lot of it was because of those two goalies. And when Grayson Payne went down last year, Big Ben was getting minutes. And when Big Ben was getting EHL minutes, Jake Davies was getting more time in the EHLP. So all that kind of has added up and built up to what they're doing right now. And they called up a ton of players from last year's EHLP team because of how many got time in the EHL. So it may have been, you know, tough on the body a little bit, all like certain points of the year. But there's been a tremendous payoff for a lot of those players. And I mean, Andrew Duvall was one of them. He started off on the EHLP team and now he's, you know, early stage is point per game in the EHL right now and there's a number of guys that are going to be big EHL contributors that were on that P team last year. Yeah. And they're both 04s. I think that's an important thing too. Uh Neil and Jake is there in their age out years, so Yeah. I think that's a great thing to have for goaltending and junior hockey is two veterans like that, like you just said Jake that have made it through the EHL pipeline the way you're supposed to. Yeah. And two that I would guess haven't I don't know for sure, probably have aspirations to play in college. So yeah. You can help each other and you can both play, you know, maybe you each get 15, 20 starts for the year and you both have a great season. You kind of do a little, don't want to say it, but swimming old Mark, I know. All right, Don, <laughs> sign Jeremy. <laughs> we'll bring it up. We won't go off the rails, but, you know, could have something like that where you're tandem and you guys maybe kind of go 50-50 or maybe one of them runs away with it. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a great, great thing for uh, Coach McGrath and Coach Collins and everyone with Valley. Sandwiched between those two wins for Valley, they did drop uh, the first game of the season to the Wolves. And here's your fantasy curveball, guys. Cam Reardon didn't play that game. What? Yeah, yeah, look at J- Jeff is like floored right now. So I'm gonna, <laughs> like, Mr. Minutes. <clears throat> I'm gonna probably butcher this name, but uh, oh, do it, do it, do it. Oh, I see it. Ah, Bukas Bukatovs, I think is how you say it. He oh, got the start good, and the win in the opener. So. I, I get. I, I hear Jake that wow. if we had started, he's probably in first place. That he has Duval. We don't know who he has for a defenseman or a goalie. Like maybe that makes a difference. But this is a curveball because of how many minutes and how many shots Reardon, you know, just absorbed last year. So is he still tired? Maybe from last year. So maybe we're still <laughs> trying to get him some rest. <laughs> We just gearing up for a big showcase, but True, yeah, I, I, I probably True. would have picked Reardon for my goalie. They, but I had a D up my sleeve, but I'm not gonna say it because oh. I, I there's no sense in being right. transparent in this environment because wow. I know I'm just gonna get hurt in the end. <laughs> Shots fired. Uh, of course, we're dropping this podcast on September 26th. Uh, one week from today, guys, we have a showcase starting. Does that feel real? Okay, that's when yeah. the fantasy challenge starts. So next week, the Maybe podcast is the, the podcast is going to come out a day early, the day before. I, I've never tried to record and drop a podcast on the opening day of a showcase, but I can imagine it'd be pretty hard for us uh, yeah. to be focused for that. Um, but so I, I bring it all up because by the time we get to the, the next podcast recording, you got to get your picks in, everyone. We're going to be you know putting out that uh, form for you to fill out put it in that forward, that D, that goalie. Again, it doesn't matter if you have all three EHL or if you have some combination two and one or all three EHLP, you can have a mix. So you could, as you said, Jeff, go to Will Link the fifth. It was only one goal, but it was a great goal. So Goal and an assist, though. Oh, and an assist, true. Point on both goals for Will Link the fifth. So something that we have to uh, keep an eye on as we get into weekend number two here, keep an eye on that team like the Express EHL team. 
that hasn't played yet. So I wouldn't wait too long to get your picks in, but de definitely, you know, take in the games this weekend and make sure you lock them in uh, before Wednesday. But with that, we'll talk about what games we're keeping an eye on the most in this upcoming weekend. And now here's what to watch for in the EHL and the EHLP. I obviously mentioned the Express, the one team that hasn't played a game yet. So it's a game that I, I do have uh, my eye on, but I'm circling a different game. Um, I actually have a game in mind tomorrow that I want to watch uh, closely. That's when the Wizards travel down to Simsbury to take on the Norris. The Wizards only have played one game so far. They have a win over that HCRI team that Jake's a big fan of. Nor'easters split their opening uh, two-game set, the nutmeg battle that we always say uh, with the <laughs> Rough Riders. But hey, they scored a lot of goals in mm -hmm. those two games. So you know, the Wizards won 4-2 in their first one. Maybe a high-scoring game. I don't know. A, a game that I'm definitely circling, though, to watch this weekend. Uh, I like a game that's actually happening today at 1 o'clock. So I guess we'll <laughs> hopefully get this posted before then. Uh, <laughs> but. Will. The uh, the Apple Corps in their uh, their home opener at Bruce Rice Arena, uh, yeah, Bruce Rice Arena, and for some reason that sounded weird when I just said that, but <laughs> there's one eight three in their opener, um, and Connor McNeilis, our old friend now the head coach at used to be with the eighty sevens with Adam Pooley and the bunch, he's looking for his first win as head coach in the New York Apple Corps, so uh, good luck, Connell. Hope you can get it. Yeah, okay. Listen, we alluded to this one earlier, uh, a enchanting night. On the Cape tomorrow night, uh, between the <laughs> uh, Seahawks and the uh, and the Avalanche, Is Seahawks like are a violin player in there or something. Are this? debuting a, a New Jersey, right? Yes, so, they, are. they are. Yeah, um, oh, that's right. I, I won't I won't drop too much because I don't know how much uh, you know Coach Xander and Coach Richard want out there about that, but um, yeah. it would be worth clicking yeah. on that slow hockey link tomorrow to see <laughs> what the Seahawks are rocking. Yep. yep. And only Jim McCabe on the call. We think. We hope. Uh yes, yes, yes. All right, so, James, okay, so keep you locked in for Your the team. EHLP. I'll go to Sunday night, uh, five o'clock, kind of more Sunday evening, if you will. Um, that's Little Fires versus 87s. The two teams, it's always one of the two of them that you know, in previous history, that has come out of that South Division and gone to the Frozen Finals. Could it be somebody else this year? Could it be a union who's off to a one and one start, or the Bears in their first year in the EHLP, or the Huntsman? It could be, but. Those two teams, whenever they get together, whether it's EHL or EHLP, it's always fun. So I'll be watching for that one on Sunday night. How about uh, Huntsman 87s, two teams that uh, don't like each other and <laughs> Huntsman haven't played yet. So yeah. let's go Zach Overholzer and the PA Huntsman. Woo! Jake's or Jeff's secret favorite team. That's right. <laughs> um, I'm going to I'm gonna hit a, a double whammy here. Oh. Um, so the Bandits play this afternoon and they play again Saturday. Yeah. Um, Maurice, their first game in the EHL premiere. I'm really excited to see this Bandits team. They were able to generate a good amount against the Express, but they weren't able to finish. So I'm really excited to see what they can do when they finish because they had strong goaltending. They had a pretty strong blue line that played a decent game against the Express. So I'm looking forward to seeing them. And of course, Wolves captain, Zach Spacuza. Because I love <laughs> Wolves captains, just like AJ Lackis. Final you know, I was gonna say, if you had to choose one, Zach Spacuza or AJ Lackis, Jake, would you be able to do that or no? Um, I jump off the boat before they did. Wow, <laughs> wow, <laughs> damn, that is dedication. Holy yes, smokes. yes. Well, that sets the table here for weekend number two in the EHL. We have some teams playing their first game, uh, games this weekend. Of course, as I just mentioned, we're gonna drop next week's podcast a day early. For those that like to uh, mark when it's coming out and listen to it on their ride in, into the rink, I hear that a lot from coaches throughout the week. Um, we're dropping it on Wednesday next week because of the showcase. Uh, so make sure to tune in Wednesday next week because we'll have a big showcase preview to talk about all of the EHL games, all the EHLP games, and all of the PPP games, the peak performance prep hockey. To me, a little yeah, bit of a tongue twister. Sense, you're, I think you're calling one or two of those games, Jeff. Or maybe I, calling one. I think I think you got one. Yeah, I got to double so, check. I was I looking at I'm, Dave's schedule yesterday. So yeah, I'm doing nine or ten games. So yeah, nice little welcome back. Get that yeah. voice ready. Uh, but if you can't make it to a game this weekend, of course mm -hmm. you can always tune in and catch every game live on Full Hockey. And we'll talk to you guys next week with our October showcase preview.
See you. Actually, see you next week, boys. <laughs> Thanks for listening to The E! Show, presented by the Hockey Podcast Network. Learn more about us at easternhockeyleague.org and follow us on all of your favorite social media platforms. Also, be sure to subscribe and get notified when our next podcast episode is released.